Hello everybody and um, thank you for joining us. This episode is going to be a little bit different and we're going to take possibly two to three episodes to cover this topic. It's something that we've touched on in a few of our other previous videos and we've said that we would make um, some more videos just focusing on this and we want to do this now. Um, it's the topic of uh, porn addiction and our journey, my husband's journey through it and my experience as his wife. This episode is going to be focused on Carlos's experience. I'm going to ask him some questions and we're just going to have some dialogue. And the next episode is going to be from my experience as his wife. And then if we need to keep going, we'll do another episode after that. But this is something that we really feel that we want to share with everyone. And we just hope and pray that it is helpful to someone out there um, who might be struggling with this, whether you're a husband, wife, male, female. Um, that's our hope with this video. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, the first question is, you personally, why do you want to make this video? I want to make this video in hopes that it would be a help to men and women who are struggling with pornography. Pornography is a what I would call a secret sin. You know, a lot of other sins are done uh, out in the open, but porn is something that's usually done in secret, and secrets kill you. Mm. And there's a lot of people in bondage to pornography and don't know how to find freedom. And being that I have found freedom, in Christ and I've been delivered from it and I'm in the healing process of it um, I'd like to see other people um, come out and find that same hope that I found that's awesome okay so when was the first time that you were exposed to porn and how old were you I was about seven or eight years old I remember um, we lived at the time, we lived in um, Huntington Street in New London, Connecticut. And um, I was with one of my brothers and we were just minding our own business that day, just walking around in the projects. And we stumbled upon a group of kids that we knew and they were all huddled up and, and doing something. And, and we was both curious as to what they were doing. And little did we know that um, what they were uh, actually doing was viewing uh, a pornographic magazine. And um, that's pretty much when I first got my exposure. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like that affected you? Um, as a child, um, first of all, I mean, we know that no, no child should ever be exposed to that stuff. It was, uh, it was shocking. And... Um, <clears throat> It began what I believe uh, it was a big paradigm shift in how I viewed sexuality, how I viewed the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. And it just began to um, stir up a curiosity about sexuality that should never have begun until much later on. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. So at what point do you feel like this was a problem like is it something that you from that point on struggled with or was it continuous was it sporadic did you have like triggers like at that point you know mm, no um i think at, at that point it was just it was just starting mm -hmm. it didn't become a problem until much later on I would say at about the age of 14, um, but prior to that, all those years following, you know, I I viewed girls, you know, mm -hmm. from a young boy's eyes in a way that I shouldn't, in an inappropriate way, and, yeah. you know, and the, it, it was just, it, it started uh, a sexual mindset that mm -hmm. should never have yeah, you know? that was different than what just is normal for a boy, you think. Exactly. You said you felt like it became a problem around your teens. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, at about age 14 is when I had my, you know, I had my first uh, experience with masturbation. And um, I can remember at the time, my brothers would sneak in pornographic videos. And that just added to the mm, fire. Wow. You know, and um, yeah, at that, at that, around that age was when I, when it really started to pick up. You know, when it re- when it really started to uh, become an issue in my life. Mm. And w- did you feel like there were things that triggered it? Like, like if you felt under like stressed or something happened, did you feel like that became like an escape for you? Definitely, definitely. You know, there were there were issues in the home. We were um, we were a dysfunctional family. You know, to some degree. You know, there was. There was things that happened in the home that shouldn't have. There was things that happened in school, you know. Um, there's there's the normal peer pressure that you go through, you know, things that, you know, you want to find an escape for. Yeah. And that was my escape. Mm. That was the way that I found uh, an escape from pressures, from um, pain, and from things that I didn't know how to deal with. Yeah. Did you feel like... Um, having not having a father in your life affected affected this do you feel like if you had a father in your life it might have changed this somehow I do I think I think that a father a father figure is um, something that has been lacking in so many young men Mm -hmm. and and the primary reason why a lot of young men have gotten into trouble sexually and um, it was definitely the case with me. Um, I think if I would have had that guidance, you know, I'm not gonna say that it it wouldn't have happened, yeah. but I w- would have dealt with it um, in a much better way early on. Mm. It, it would have been dealt with quicker, because you know, young young people they dabble into it. it yeah. They get curious about their sexuality. They get curious about sex you know and so that happens it's a it's a that's a natural thing but the depth that i went to Mm. you know yeah and the the trouble that i got into the the addictive part of it that you know could have been avoided i think Mm -hmm. if i had um somebody there you know a father uh puts uh identity you know, he instills identity in a child. Yeah. A mother nurtures a child, but a father names a child. You know, a father will tell you, that's not who you are. Mm. You know, this is who you are. This is why you're here. Yeah. You know, you're better than that. You know, and, and, and I didn't, I feel I didn't have that necessary voice in my life mm. to guide me yeah. and help me out of that situation. Yeah. So, you, do you feel like it became, at what point do you feel like it became an addiction? That you had the real, realization that, wow, this is probably a problem. I would say in between my early to late teens, I noticed that it would call on me, mm. you know. And I would get involved with pornography more times than I wanted to. Mm. And it was no longer a thing I was curious about. It became a thing that I dreaded. Wow. You know? And even though, you know, porn has a feel-good sort of a thing to it, yeah. it also has a lot of uh, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, a lot of condemnation, things that I really didn't understand. I, I understood shame at that time. Mm-hmm. But I didn't understand the condemnation that I was feeling, you know. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, yeah. And do you feel like, how do you feel it affected you as a person and even just with your relationships with people? Like, do you feel like it isolated you? Definitely. I think it created a lot of insecurity. Um, I was insecure about myself. I was insecure about who I was. Mm. I didn't know who I was. Yeah. You know, when you know who you are, you you avoid 
you avoid this stuff but when you don't know who you are you know you become a victim to this and mm. and i was so heavy in this that yeah it affected my relationships it uh, it affected how i saw people i i saw i saw relationships through a very distorted lens you know and i wasn't able to properly connect with people mm. the way i should have mm. because i had a faulty view of myself mm. i also had a faulty view of others wow that's good so okay when we got married obviously it wasn't something that we talked about it's not like something that you just say hey i got a porn issue so i thought you should know that you know we never it was never even like up for discussion yeah because obviously i'm sure you felt like it was like that was a shameful and mm -hmm. how do you t talk about that and you had a hard time really expressing things back then too you know yeah. but when we got married um how did it affect the way that you saw me okay initially when we when we got married um i had the ignorant the same ignorance that a lot of men and probably women have had that um marriage will cure it mm -hmm. that marriage will cure the pornography so initially i didn't think it was going to be an issue until much later on when when like you mentioned the triggers yeah. you know things would happen when disharmony happened between you and I or, or, or whatever things happen at work, you know. Um, but, um, you know, it definitely um, affected the way I saw you, you know. Yeah. Like I would objectify you, you know. Mm -hmm. And no, no husband should ever do that, especially to his wife, yeah. you know. Um, it... Um, it hindered intimacy because yeah. if you're not able to be honest with your wife, how are you going to have an intimacy? You you, you can't have an intimacy un, unless you're open. Yeah. You know, we we where there's shame, where there's guilt, where there's condemnation, um, there can't be a real intimacy. There can't be a real closeness. And and this secret was killing me on the inside. And um it was something that was growing. I think it even got worse in our marriage. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I remember, um, I remember when it was something that, um, I'll share just for a minute, when when it f I first discovered it, it was on the computer. Remember mm -hmm. that was when like the internet first yeah. came out and we yeah. first had this big clunky computer and, and I was, I wasn't at all like I am now with computers, but I knew enough and I found um, certain pictures and I found um, there was, we got something from our phone bill. Because remember back then when you would have to do like pay-per-view something, it would come on your phone bill. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking around and like, you know, saying, wow, maybe, how did this get on our phone bill? Like this was like a hundred dollar thing. And I'm like, what the heck is this? Like, and I completely denied it. completely lied to my face and, you know, and I actually fought the bill. I fought the bill and I was like, take this off of my bill. This was not, we didn't pay, we didn't pay for this. We didn't do this. Da, 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 da. And then years later to come to find out that it was actually, it was you, you know, but that was like the first thing that I remember. And then there was the, the like pictures that I would see in the, in the history of the, and words that when you start typing, Google remembers what you yeah. type. So Literally, I, I know were, that that was going to, that there was a history yep. and in, in so your searches. I started to learn all this stuff. That's actually how I started to learn all this stuff. Um, and it made me curious and I would ask you and you would deny it. But then as I started to learn how to dig into computers and stuff, it was like, Hmm, there's definitely something going on, but you know, I was in denial. I didn't even know what, like, I didn't even realize that there was a such thing as a porn addiction. Like, I was that naive and ignorant back then. You know, I knew about, like, Playboy, and I knew about the magazines and stuff like that and yeah. videos, but I, I didn't never even had the real knowledge of, that this was a problem for people, that people, yeah. that, that this was something, like, we were dealing with, yeah. you know? Yeah, it was very, it was very taboo back in that time. Yeah. 
And no it one was, talked about it. Yeah, nobody talked Especially about it. Especially in the it. church. It was not, it was not <laughs> at all in the open. It was not up for discussion. Yeah. And people were heavily shamed yeah. if this would come out. Exactly. And let me ask you this. So at that point, say like when we were married and it was like a really, it was, it was really bad. Did you have moments where you felt like you could never be free of this thing? Absolutely. Um, again, the, the amount of guilt and condemnation and um, shame that I experienced, um, you know, I literally can hear the voice of the enemy telling me that um, I didn't deserve. I didn't deserve my family. I didn't deserve my kids. I didn't deserve my wife. Mm. And I didn't know how to talk about it. Um, but it, it was uh, it was such a a weight, I would say, mm. over my shoulders. And you know, when 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 you feel so much uh, condemnation and so much uh, guilt, because you know you've dabbled into stuff that you shouldn't have as a husband, you know, or or in some people's case as a wife. Um, you don't feel like you you deserve forgiveness mm. you know and the the devil rides on that he rides mm. on that and that's where the guilt comes in and so i didn't think that me especially as a christian you know because we were christians at that time i didn't think that me knowing all the things that i knew all the things about the bible even having had a relationship with God um, I did not think that I was worthy of forgiveness that mm. you know again that's one of the that's one of the biggest things the biggest lies, lies. Yeah. that I believed I I did not think that um, my wife would forgive me or even should forgive me for what I've done you know and so all these things, you know, help in me seeing this whole thing as I'm hopeless, you know, I'll never come out of this. And, um, you know, pornography is, is a thing that people struggle with, but there is a spirit in connection to pornography. Yeah. It's an unclean spirit. It's, it's, a, it's a spirit of um, sexual impurity, you know. And that spirit would lie to you, you know, mm. um, in, in, um, in Christianity, you know, the, this spirit is called, uh, incubus and succubus. And, and it, it is a spirit that will wage war against your marriage. It is, it is one of the leading, uh, spirits, I believe that causes divorce and so, you know, this, this spirit was heavily fighting me to not believe hmm. that I can be free. So saying all that, how, how did you find freedom? And like, talk about what you discovered was the root of it. And, you know, what was your process like from like when you really started in that place where you wanted to fight this and you wanted mm -hmm. to overcome this? I remember the Lord telling me this. He said, I'll never forget. He said, he said, if you don't get up right now, if you don't get up. And that made me realize that I can get up. But he said, if you don't get up right now, you never will. And when God tells you something, when God says, listen, this is it. You know, this is what you have to do. There is a grace there for your deliverance. There's a grace there to get up and to overcome whatever the issue is, whatever that bondage is. And somehow I knew that, and that just kind of gave me some hope. But um, that began my journey to deliverance. And from that point on, that's when you and I uh, visited... Um, went to see Mark de Jesus 
Mm-hmm. We went. We went for some counseling, and mind you, that was like the, I don't know, maybe fourth or fifth um, try with counseling for us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we had gone to multiple counselors. Yeah, and, and we were. It was this. This was years, years mm-hmm. that we're but talking. It, but it was through that encounter and through that experience, and I thank God for him. Yes, I think I thank God for Mark. Um, I was able to find out the depth of the issue, and it really wasn't porn at all. Porn was what the devil was using to keep me where I was, yeah. but the issue was the hurt and the pain and the things that I've suffered when I was a child that I never dealt with. Yeah. You know, hidden things, you know, not having a father, you know, the father wound, the mother wound, yeah. you know, all these issues that I went through that I suffered as a child that were never dealt with pain and hurt you mm-hmm. know and so I would run to porn to pain porn was my um, painkiller yeah. you know I would numb out with it yeah. not want to think about the stuff but you know the Lord helped that brother to help me to see yeah. that the issue wasn't pornography it was the pain and so when I began to confront the pain because mm-hmm. I had to develop the courage to do it. Sometimes that's not easy, but I have to ask the Lord to give me the courage and the strength and the grace. You know, it was when I confronted the pain that I really began to see that pornography did not have the hold on me that it said it had, mm-hmm. you know. and. That's when I began to see hope and began to realize I can come out of this. I can overcome. That's good. So uh, I remember when we when we went to um, talk to Mark De Jesus, and I remember in our discussions, one of the things that you mentioned also was rejection. That was that was also part of it. Rejection, your the mother and the father wound mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And um, do you feel like how much of a part do you feel like rejection played? Rejection, huge, huge. Again, um, rejection will keep you away from people. It will keep you away from from relationships that will aid you. You know, that will restore you. That will that will help you in so many ways. And so, the devil works in isolation. You know. Yeah. As long as you're isolated, you're you're the perfect prey. And that was me, you know. So rejection was a was a huge player. You know, I struggled with relation with uh with rejection uh most of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I did not feel like I was included or wanted. Um and even when people did include me, you know, that spirit would lie to you yeah. again. You're looking through a distorted lens, yes. you know, and it, it so so it wasn't so much the fact that people rejected me. It was more like I rejected myself Self. and I saw myself the way that spirit mm-hmm. wanted me to see myself, you know, again, through hmm. a distorted lens. Yeah. So now that you're where you are and it's been all these years that you know going through this process what advice would you give somebody who is who finds himself right in the midst of that addiction where they feel like they they can't be free what what would you say to them and what would you advise them I would tell them that there's hope and that that's a lie that you know and I'm gonna tell you this I was bound to pornography for many years so the the length of the time that you're you're in an addiction doesn't even matter it doesn't matter to God God is greater than that you know it really is your cooperation with him and and your faith you know just believe believe that um that he can deliver you that you can overcome this by his power by his grace and that um he forgives you it doesn't matter what you've done and doesn't matter to the degree that you've uh, lowered yourself to this stuff it doesn't matter Um, he will forgive 
no matter how great the sin is, he will forgive you. Yes. And as a matter of fact, he does forgive you. And um, again, God is, God is greater than any addiction. So I would say uh, believe and strengthen your faith in him. Strengthen your faith by, by getting into the word. You know, and what I mean by the word is the Bible. You know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so when we strengthen our faith, you know, that is a powerful weapon against the lies of the enemy. Mm. I would also say, just because I've watched you through this whole thing, is to find someone, a counselor or someone who is knowledgeable, someone who can help you get to the root of the issue, someone who can help you to dig deep into yourself to see what is it that is drawing you to the addiction. Yeah. In Carlos's case, there was a, multiple things from his childhood, lack of father, you know, the disconnect with his mom, mm -hmm. you know, other things as well. But, you know, you have to, you have to be a person who is willing to look at yourself. You have yeah. to be a person who is willing to admit that I need healing what, or whatever it is, whatever the, the root issue is. Mm -hmm. Ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to to show you what that is and to heal you and get the help that you need if you if you need it. Yeah. You know, there some people have just miraculously been delivered by it and but that's not everybody's story. Everybody's story is different. Yeah. You know, but And don't go. believe don't believe the lie that if you come out in the open with this that um, people will just ridicule you and shame you. And, right. and 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 your um, your reputation will be nothing you know it will be dirt I'm gonna tell you something you know when I overcame this and and I know that a big sign that I have overcome this too is the fact that I came out in the open you know this sin um, it thrives in darkness yes. It, it thrives when you keep it secret, but the moment you expose it, it loses its power. The, de the devil thrives in darkness, yeah. but the minute you expose him, he loses power. He loses ground over you. So exposure is the biggest thing. Mm. Don't, don't believe the lies that shame tried to tell you. Don't believe shame is a spirit. And as a matter of fact, you know, I bind that spirit and I break that spirit off of the viewers right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the anointing to break every yoke right now. Thank you, Lord. That as, as these people mm -hmm. who are watching step forward, as, as your people step forward, Lord, and even if they're not your people and they're viewing this, Lord, I thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke and I break shame. I break every lie. I break the darkness, Father, mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. I yes. thank you, Father God, that they don't need to be ashamed. They don't need to feel ashamed. They don't need to give in to the shame of this. But they can find freedom in you. Yes. And I thank you for the spirit of liberty right now. I thank you for, for angelic hosts mm -hmm. right now breaking every chain in the lives of every viewer right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, is there any books that you can think of that have helped you? Any resources? Victory Over the Darkness by Neil Anderson is a huge one and that book will mm. help you with your identity. Yeah. Your identity in Christ it will help you to rediscover who you truly are because when you know who you truly are you don't give in to stuff like this. Yeah. You know, it will empower you to walk in your freedom in Christ. Very, very uh, powerful book. Another one is um, Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Myers. Um, there's a few other ones I know. There's so many. Yeah, we can uh, gather that for the next time, if anything. Uh, Spiritual Warfare and Deliverance Manual by mm -hmm. um, John. Apostle John Eckhart. And I'm not sure if that's the exact title, but it's something like that. Mm -hmm. But that's a that's a powerful book too. Um, and that one is a book on deliverance, 
but know this, that you can do self-deliverance. A lot of believers don't know that you can do deliverance on yourself. That's one of the, if I can say that's, that's one of the things that helped me as well. Yeah. I would say, I just want to just throw this out there for if anybody's watching and you are the spouse of somebody dealing with us. Like we said, our next video is going to deal more with my side of things and my journey with Carlos through this. Um, but I would advise you if your spouse is trying to be free, if your spouse is willing to be free and willing to fight this, to stay, to stand by them. It can be the hardest thing. And I'm not going to lie that this has been one of the hardest things that I ever had to go through and live through, but I don't regret it. One of the, it was one of the greatest things that helped me. Yep. And we're going to talk about that because, you know, I know for a fact that if I had not stayed with him, I don't believe that he would have found the freedom that he did. And, you know, I get a lot of dreams and, and visions and stuff like that. And there were multiple dreams that I had when we were going through this that God showed me what, what the outcome would have been had I walked away. And it, you know... The only reason I stayed really was because I saw in him a willingness and a desire to be free. Hmm. And yes, it was a, it was a battle. I'm not gonna lie. This it wasn't like an overnight thing. It, it was there was times where it felt like it was like a like a merry-go-round. You know what I mean? It was like here we go again, round and round we go. You know, oh we're we're good. No, oh well, here we go again. But it was he reached a point. Carlos reached a point where he it was like I want to be free. You know, and I knew he did want to be free, but he reached this place where it was like, this is it. Like, I'm I'm fighting this and, you know, I'm going to do whatever I have to do. You know, so if you are married to somebody who's in that place, you know, get help for yourself. Definitely get help for yourself. Find somebody to to um to talk to find somebody to to pray with. Find a counselor for yourself. Yes. You know, I'll be honest. I didn't have that. I, I went through this, I always say the Holy Spirit was my teacher. You know, I, I, I wished I had somebody, but back then this wasn't talked about like it is now. And even now it's not talked about as much as it should be. I believe that churches should talk about this openly. I believe that, you know, it should be something that people expose. Mm. Because like Carl said, it's hidden in the darkness. And things that are hidden in the darkness are going to thrive and grow. But the moment that you expose them to the light, it's like it it shuts it down and it sh and and it's almost like I almost see it like this, like um you got this little cat in the corner and you got this it's this big shadow like it's you know what I mean it looks like this big thing but you know what I mean when you bring it to the light you realize wow it's it's it can be overcome, it can be dealt with it can be it can be destroyed, mm -hmm. and just like Carlos found freedom you can find freedom too yes so this is going to be the end of this first video and we're going to jump into the next one next time we're going to deal with dealing with this as a spouse amen so questions or comments please feel free to um even if you um if you guys know us and you want to approach us privately you know because we understand this is not an easy issue to just come out in the open with. Um, but we will definitely be keeping everyone in prayer. Yeah. So God bless you and thank you for watching. Bye.